and welcome folks welcome back to let's play bioforge last time we killed kanan uh, no that was actually the in the first video no last time we spent basically the whole video just reading out logbooks from a logbook logbook and guess guess what we are going to do today we are going to read from a logbook namely our own personal logbook I mean our no not the logbook that we already read which basically just contained one entry we are going to read our journal because this journal contains some important yeah, information um, actually relating to the gameplay which we probably should have read in the beginning but I forgot okay I've noticed a significant response problem whenever I repeat the same combat motion why should this be is it an energy problem or am I, am I internal systems badly engineered? Well, actually it is because we are playing on medium difficulty. I must remember not to repeat my tactics while in battle. Yeah, we saw that in action um, when we faced... Yeah, the, when we were facing k um, okay, Yeah, okay. I heard a cry from agony from beyond myself, a guard, another prisoner. This was, yeah, after we've killed the nurse bot, you heard a scream, and this was the scream that is being referred to in this journal. So, as we play this game, this um, basically keeps track of what we've done. Um, I want this, this also gives some hints to the player, like this very first journal entry does. My body is some sort of machine, but I can tell that I was once human. Yeah, we have seen in the logbook that we were human and also in the information that we read last time, we are in fact of the species Homo sapiens. I am a cyborg. Who made me this way? Why did they? How could I, how could I have let them? Well, we probably didn't really let them since we saw in the introductory cutscene at the very beginning of the game that we are being dragged into the space. So I don't think that this surgery was, um, yeah, voluntary. Did I write what is in this book here in my cell? I don't, I don't remember writing it. It sort of sounds like me. It's hard to tell without any basis of comparison. These tremors feel extremely severe. Why isn't anyone coming to check on me in person? Something has gone wrong here and I am in danger. Is there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? I might be able to use this utensil for something. And I don't mean to eat with, yeah. This gives you, yeah, basically the game tells you, wink wink, you use the fork to solve a puzzle, which we did last time. I don't recognize the girl in the photo and I don't think it belongs to my one armed friend. Yeah, in fact we already know it is not his girlfriend, we in fact know that this was given to him by Dane, uh, which was the guy in, which was in cell number four. But she must mean something to someone here. Kanan, the prisoner in the cell next to mine, was once one of the people who did this to me. Now he is a mutilated, mutilated and insane freak. I'm stronger, th I'm stronger than a normal human being, but not strong enough to pull, strong enough to pull the doors of the cell block more than a few inches apart. They are locked up tight, but I caused some kind of short in an electrical panel next to the doors. I cannot get the panel off. Yeah, basically just more hints on how you can solve these puzzles. The voices over the radio said another prisoner has escaped. Who are those reinforcements coming? Who are those reinforcements coming to kill? Me or him? Okay, technically, so I was assuming last time that when they talked about a prisoner having been escaped, I naturally assumed that it would have been us, but maybe there is in fact another prisoner, uh, which we don't know about. Uh, we need to step closer to the screen. Okay. Um, this is cell number two, the cell that contains this very, very dangerous thing that should under no circumstances be released. 
Let's actually try to release, release it. Okay. Um, fortunately, the game actually won't let you. Um, because you can't disable the force bars. This is Kanan's cell, and you can see his body there. A uh, nice touch that the body will actually be exactly where it was when you killed him. So this is not just some pre-rendered image that they put in the game. This um, is actually yeah, rendered in real time. And these fucking earthquakes can go fuck themselves. Because they probably will screw up my recording. Okay, um... Hmm. A hand sensor. Maybe we can use that arm from K9 to open this door. Well, it wouldn't make any sense, a given the fact arm. that he was a prisoner. And... Coding a door lock to the people you are trying to prevent from uh, escaping wouldn't make much sense, but... Um... Aha, yeah. As I thought, so this does not, in fact, work out of the box. But maybe we can still do something about that. Um, so there are several... There are three computer monitors right there. Um, so this... Um, gives, I think, some information about the personnel. So command... Okay, most of the command are dead for some reason. Uh, with only one of them seemingly, seemingly being alive. Yeah, only Asher. I wonder what happened there. Uh, scientific. Okay, most of them evacuated. One of them deceased. No, two of them deceased. Uh, no, no name I think I recognize. No. Wait, there was one name that I recognize, namely Mdent. This was being referred to in one of the um, logs we picked up. Security. Ah, Kanan. Um, yeah, revoked. So, he used to be part of this organization, but then, for reasons unbeknown to us, um, he was actually imprisoned here. Machine shop. Okay, one guy is apparently still in the space. Uh, ah, another one in the control room. Langley. Missing in act. Okay. Missing in act. Uh, yeah, there still seem to be two people still in the space. Ah, security access code. Well, we don't know that. Um, what if we press emergency? Emergency procedure fusion, fusion reactor. Um, status emergency situation class 3 reactor alert in effect all personnel must obtain hard suit and proceed in an orderly fashion out of the loading plat landing platform all non-essential personnel have been evacuated to the Kilios designated dropship number 2 main systems all main systems switch to full automatic self-diagnostic and self-regulatory um, subsystems Emergency generators in operating room activated. All other subsystems offline. Non-essentials. All non-essential systems shut off. Independ independent systems. Forklift bot in control room still operating on internal power supply. Override. All other overrides below command 1. Level codes rescinded. Okay. Uh, maintenance. Let us look what this does. Okay, that's the same. That's the same text. Let us look at these data logs. Um, aha. Area data log level 2. Um, results of tremors have rendered lower levels structurally unsound and impassable. Uh, I ah, can. Um, system damage. Multiple subsystems damaged throughout base by sixth tremor. 
Um, system damage short enforced bar system on cell one of cell block. System damage malfunction in lighting system of cell two. Wait. Uh, can we repair this? Yes. Um, we have repaired apparently the lighting system in cell one. We could also repair the force bar, but um, why would why would we? Well, actually, maybe there's actually a reason to repair them. Um, cell block doors breached. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -bum. Radiation leakage into lower levels reached fatal levels. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Yeah, I think that's too much text to read out right now. Let us look at the other monitor and then we're going to check out the other cells, namely cell number two and cell number four. Ah, uh, wait. Uh, ah. Ah. Um, we can actually control this bot. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, so we can, yeah, there was a bot apparently in cell block four and we can control this bot. Um, yeah, this interface is a bit, um, well, difficult to use. Um, uh, yeah, this, this mouse interface isn't brilliant, but I think they just wanted to make this really feel like as if you are really the player I mean really really that you are really the protagonist who is doing these actions let us check out cell block um, okay we don't want to get too close to the force bar certainly so maybe um, ah, okay. okay we can't see whatever is in the cell Okay, let us check out the other cell blocks. Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, maybe I should have actually looked through the monitor. Okay, you can't really see the thing that is in the cell. So let us check out the other cell. Uh, what's that? A brute. Ah. Yeah, this was referred to in Kanan's personal log file. Hmm. Our protagonist apparently is an accomplished musician. Well, Accomplished musician. I think it's also a nice touch that he plays. He doesn't just repeat the same little tune over and over, but he actually continues playing one melody. I wonder if something happens if we keep playing this. But why would you, why would a prisoner be allowed to have a flute? That doesn't make much sense. A logbook. A logbook. Well, maybe he wasn't actually a prisoner. Who knows? Okay. Dane's logbook. Um, Non-customized issue. Yeah, all. Yeah, it says here, subject name not recorded. In the promo promotional material for this game, they actually refer to the protagonist as Lex. Um, yeah, let's read this log logbook. This is Ensign Martik Dane of the retic Reticulum Merchant Ship Stolarnoi Agrippus Reporting. That's a stupid name for a ship. I am writing this account in the unlikely event that it should ever find its way into the hands of the proper authorities. No doubt they are watching from the camera in my cell as I write. 
15 days ago we left Stralea bound from Boromok carrying medical surprise, surprise, blah, supplies. Our trip had been uneventful until we experienced a small electrical fire on one of the subdecks that was quickly extinguished. What we didn't know at the time was that this fire had caused a power surge which traveled through our entire subsystems network and wiped a vital portion of data from our jump calculator. The omission of data was so slight that it was not detected by our redundant systems until, we had, until after we had already made the jump to hyperspace. The strain placed upon our engines by the improperly calculated jump was so great that it took nearly 36 hours to power them down once the jump was underway. It is possible, possible that while it's in mid-jump Sorry, it is possible that while in mid-jump, what? Maybe mid-jump, we passed near some sort of spatial singularity which slingshotted us far beyond our normal jump capacity. When we finally reached to normal space, we had not only wandered off all charts, but we were also critically low on fuel. It is possible, although extremely unlikely, that AM that RMF Rescue and Recovery could have calculated our position this far. There are no occupied planets within the range of our detections of our detection and our jump driver was rendered inoperable. We set course for the nearest solar system. We subsisted on minimal rations and power, broadcasting a distress signal. After 11 days of boosting our transmission to its maximum, there was no response. Then it appeared as if a miracle had occurred. As we neared a gas giant, a gas giant, we received confirmation that our distress signal had been picked up. We celebrated, believing help was on the way. The next day we were attacked by two small military type dropships. We did not intend to become the first RMF ship in history to surrender to pirates, so we fought back. The first dropship was destroyed, but we lost our weapons and propulsion to a missile to a missile barrage from the second one. Seven of the 27 members of our crew died in the battle including Lieutenant Lin Nance. We were dead in the water. It was then that we learned the identity of our attackers, Mondites. We were boarded and 11 more members of our crew died in the room by room combat that followed over the next several hours. Among the dead was our captain Lison Rumerak and our first officer Findlay Smiles. This sad set of circumstances left me in command of the survivors. Two more men died as we attempted to reach the lifeboat. Our only means of escape cut off and facing a full company of armored marines, I gave the order to surrender. Three of the men directly disobeyed my order and were subsequently killed by the attackers. During that exchange, another man attempting to surrender was also killed. The mercenaries then proceeded to raid a portion of our cargo, took the remaining three of us onto their ship and blew what was left of the Agrippus into wreckage. She was 17 months away from being decommissioned. When I returned from this voyage in three, voyage in the, in three months, I was to be married to my fiancée Lorna. I don't believe either one of us will be making it. The leader of this base is a man who I have seen only, who I have seen only once, when we were first brought here. He seemed very unconcerned with our presence like he was preoccupied with something. <coughs> the base seems to be a strange mixture of digging equipment, medical facilities and little else. The world we are on is called Daedalus. It is certainly beyond the reach of the reticulum. It has probably never even been charted, never, never even been charted. Apparently, it is run by an independent group of Mondites who are carrying out some sort of secret operation here. They obviously saw our accidental presence as a security threat. 
The only thing I do not understand is why they have left us alive. They must not suspect us of spying because none of us have been questioned. The reticulum has historically been highly unresponsive to the taking of political prisoners or hostages. I'm certain we shall be quit quite worthless as a bargaining chip, but we must be of some use to them. As seen during the last moments of the Agrippa, simple mercy is not something that is characteristic among Mondites. It is impossible to judge the passage of time here. There is no view of the outside and our lights are kept on, kept on constantly. We sleep in shifts at varying times and lengths. It is useless to count them. We have been here for days. Could have been weeks. Today the three of us were escorted under armed guard and taken to some sort of medical center and physically examined. Once all of us were pronounced suitable, we were injected with some sort of chemical compound. In one man, a cargo handling specialist named Klima, it caused a devastating pain which left, which, which left him writh writhing on the floor. He just lay there and could not get up, paralyzed with agony. In the other one, Parks, a systems man maintenance tech, it caused what must have been horrifying hallucinations. He looked around constantly, sometimes dodging things that weren't there, waving his arms. I just sat there waiting to find out what would happen to me. A strange calm just came over me as I watched the other two go through their internal tortures. After several hours it was over and they took us back to ourselves. More tests the same as before. I saw the surgeon again. The base leader. He said the other results were inconclusive. Parks begged them not to inject him again. He fought them. I wanted to help him, but by then my injection had kicked in. All I could do was sit there passively as they forcibly injected him with the chemicals. This round of hallucinations were evidently more terrifying than the first though. They had barely left the room when he began shrieking at the top of his lungs. He screamed and screamed until his voice completely broke and then he was reduced to making these low guttural hisses. Klima had long since passed out from the pain, so I was the only one in the room to watch what happened next. I tried speaking to Parks several times but he never once answered me. He just rolled around and around on the floor until I noticed the blood. It wasn't until the disturbance brought the guards back that I saw what had really happened. Parks had clawed out his eyes. He was laughing like an idiot when they took him away. It was the last time I saw him. Parks cell is now empty. Only Klima and I remain. The leader is a, of the base is a surgeon. His name is Mastava. Ah, that is so the, the guy we saw in the introductory cutscene, that's actually the leader of the Mondites. I demanded to know where Parks was. His only response was in the lake. The lake? He was <coughs> sorry. He was utterly undisturbed by the fact that I am a merchant officer. Or that he has killed crewmen and destroyed the ship of the RMF and interfered with the circuit reticulum. The mercs had read, read our records. The reticulum would merely assume that we were lost in the jump. He looked at me from behind the blood red mask he wore. Ah, okay now, so uh, in, in the logbook of Kanan he, he talked about his father wearing a blood red mask. So he actually mistook Mastaba for his father, apparently, at some point. He looked at me from behind the blood red mask he wore. I have claimed your ship. Its crew and their respective remains are rights of salvage. That having been done, you are now my property. The medical tests are becoming increasingly torturous now. 
I was sedated and taken to the medical room. There all I, all, all I remember seeing is some kind of robot. <clears throat> then nothing but a dream about Lorna. Her face. Her dress. Just like on the night the picture was taken. When I awoke, I had been returned to my cell. Only now I feel like my insides have been crushed and I am marked with a series of scars across my midsection. Klima does not respond when I call to him in his cell. Maybe they have him now. No one will tell me what they are doing to us, but I already know. Exploratory surgery. But why? They tortured us on all they tortured us all on a regular basis, but they've yet to ask us a single question. <clears throat> I was taken back to the medical room, stopped strapped onto the operating table and injected with something that made me increasingly lightheaded. This time, Mastaba was there in person, only I couldn't see him. I could only hear his voice telling me that this was the last of the pre preliminary examinations. If I completed this final test, I would be ready. He didn't tell me for what. I demanded to know where Klima was. His response was, he died on that table you're lying on. Now he is with your other friend in the lake. Before I could say anything, I saw the arm of the robot come down over my body. I felt completely detached and unable to move as I began to burn an incision into my stomach. Mastaba stepped forward and reached inside of me. He turned to me and asked, This is just the beginning. I promise you there will be a lot to see. Would you like to stay awake? I stared into his eyes for what seemed like hours. No, I whispered. When I awoke, I was back in my cell alone. There is a new prisoner in the cell across from me. That is us here. I cannot see him. He is lying unconscious in his bunk. At first I thought it might be Klima or Parks. Maybe another crewman from the Agrippa had managed to survive. But it wasn't. I have never seen this man before. There is something very large being moved into the cell next to Mark. <clears throat> yeah, cell number two. Parks must really be, be gone if they are putting his old cell to use. Whatever this thing is, it is enormously heavy, judging by the number of people and the equipment they need to move it. Supervising this operation is another Mondet scientist. There is dirt on her uniform as if she'd been digging. I heard someone call her Dr. Escher. Ordering the man for her is the head guard that lurks around his, the cell block. His name is Kanan. Whatever is going into that other cell certainly sounds like it's a major security problem. Just starting to get my strength back from Dr. Mastaba's damned examinations. I saw Kanan walking through the cell block. What's in that cell? I asked him. Just something that will probably kill us all. Nothing for you to worry about. The man in cell 3 is either still unconscious or keeps to himself. He does not respond when I call out to him. Over the last few days, I've seen Kanan walking around here looking increasingly nervous. I tried to catch his attention, but per I tried to catch his attention, perhaps speak with him again, but he is all business. Still, there's something different about him. His expression does not have the cold acceptance of the other guards. He's intensely in thought and each moment is a jolt of released tension. How pathetic that my entire existence has been reduced to brief glimpses of people in the outside world. For all I know, I am imagining these little things in an attempt to occupy my mind. To save it from the heart-stopping emptiness of imprisonment. I must hold on to the hope that I shall see Lorna again. For the sake of my sanity, I must hold on to that hope. The camera is off, said the voice and I was surprised to see Kanan standing outside my cell. They'll never let you out of here. Never alive, you know that? I nodded. Kanan's eyes stared out into nowhere. I've seen the things they are finding. 
more of them every day. Nightmarish. I mean, I thought we do here. I thought what we do here was terrible enough. Do you want to get out? I was overwhelmed in confusion and disbelief. Kanan stared at me and I could see the real realization come over him. He was thinking maybe he had made a mistake, that I might try to save my life by turning, by turning him in. As an officer and a gentleman, I never, I never considered this an, as an option. When I cleared my head from the shock of what he was saying, I managed to give the approximation of a nod. They say you are a flight officer, Kanan said respectfully. Ensign RMF, I replied, snapping to attention and saluting with him with my academy best. It was his turn to give me a strange look. Can you pilot a dropship like the one you came here on? I could. There's a dropship out on the platform. She was brought in on autopilot for maintenance. The crew and marines on board are all in cold storage. You need to understand, we only get one shot at this. My ears strained to hear anyone else take that my, my ears strained to hear anyone else that might be listening. When, I said. First we need your, your we need your new neighbor. sorry. First, we need your new neighbor. He's the chosen one. That's why you are nothing but an autopsy waiting to happen. They won't think twice about killing us. But maybe they want him back bad enough that he sounded less than convinced by his own words and I sure didn't know what he was talking about. Maybe. Was all I could manage when he would when I maybe was all I could manage when he looked at me for a reply. We both laughed nervously. At what strange and uneasy moment we became at that strange and uneasy moment we became like old friends. Jailer and prisoner closer than brothers. Comrades in arms about to go into battle together, maybe for the last time. Aha! My personal access code number is 79931, he said. You might be able to use it all to get out of that bad of out of a bad spot. But let's hope it never comes down to that. Before I was even before I even thought about it, I was giving him my last possession. The picture of Lorna. Who is this? The wife? He asked. Not yet, but she will be. You missed that during the search when they brought me here. I could be going home. I could be going home? This absolute miracle was so unlikely and absurd to me that I started giggling like a schoolboy. Kanan nodded like he understood and solemnly put the picture away without saying a word. <coughs> <coughs> He reached in between the bar of the cell and put something in my hand. Just as he did, I heard the doors to the cell block open and I quickly put it behind my back. Three more guards came into the cell and opened the door to cell 3. The man inside walked out with guns pointed at him, holding a hand in front of his weakened eyes. The man slowly walked out of the cell block. The guards followed. As Kanan went, he looked as Kanan went, he looked back at me. He flashed me the sign of five. It wasn't until the cell block doors closed again that I allowed myself to even notice the reassuring familiar metallic heaviness in my metallic heaviness in my right hand. A blaster. <coughs> it was fully charged. Oh boy, this goes on and on. I mean, we failed. I have been recaptured, and Kanan is also a prisoner here now. The man from cell three has has been the subject of a monstrous experiment. He is no longer human. I don't know what he what he is now. For some period of time, they have simply been beating me to unconsciousness whenever I show signs of awakening. I suppose. They've just gotten tired of it now. Today the guards came for Kanan. He fought as best as he could, but in the end they took him anyway. No sign of life from cell 3. Kanan has been jabbering like a lunatic ever since they brought him back. He keeps screaming some converse conversation with his mother that must be going inside his head. 
I can't see into his cell from here. I was awakened by the sound of an explosion in the cell block. Two of the guards went to look in on Kanan. From what I heard, he must have been mauled one of them really bad. Kanan continues to get worse. All he does is growl and howl like an animal. The guards have just told me that I that now is it sorry. The guards have ju just told me that now is it is my turn to be taken back to the operation room. This journal has reached an end. No matter what occurs, know that I always loved you, Laura. No, no, sorry. If I should somehow get the chance to write again, I would end. Okay. Um, actually, don't. Yeah, game you shall. Aha! That's cool. So, um, the game actually learns. Yeah. When it learns the thing that this is Dane's logbook, it also changes the. Yeah. The, how it's been referred to in the game, which is yeah, a cool addition. Okay. So, when we'll come back, folks, we will hopefully do a little bit less text logs reading, but more action on more puzzle solving. I mean, not that I don't like this story, I think it's actually very interesting, but I think it's also. Interesting to get, see some action again. Yeah, so I'm really excited until the, the next episode. I mean for the next video um, Yeah, I hope you like this video and I hope to see you in the next one if you stuck around till this very end which you probably didn't but um, If you did then congratulations um, You've just wasted a, a 30 minutes of your life. Well, anyway, until next time, folks, until then.